Kennedy, for my generation, was one of those rare individuals who could come across to anyone. He set lofty goals. Some of us thought at the time they were even impossible goals. Uh, every problem he was tackling head on. And so for my generation, we saw this young couple coming into the White House and it was like a whole new world. The optimism was, uh, the, the cup of optimism was just spilling over. It was very exciting. Uh, as a young Catholic gentleman, and at the time I was national president of the Catholic Youth Organization, that we had someone who was a major candidate, uh, the Democratic candidate for president of the United States. But beyond all of that, and beyond the, uh, the great prospect of breaking a barrier that had never been broken before, and it was his youth, his vitality, he had a wonderful story, he was a World War II veteran. And then, of course, his marriage to uh, Jacqueline Bouvier, um, right here in Newport, some years earlier, I think 53, uh, gave him another closer connection to Rhode Island. So coming from Massachusetts and Rhode Island, uh, I really felt a very strong kinship with him. Walter Cron guide in our newsroom and there has been an attempt, as perhaps you know now, on the life of President Kennedy. He was wounded in an automobile driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, along with Governor Connolly of Texas. They've been taken to Parkland Hospital there, where their condition is as yet unknown. I was in, in the parking lot. There was a parking lot between Albertus and Hickey, uh, which later uh, became Soa Hall. And I was walking there, and someone came running out and said, the, the, the president has been shot. And uh, of course, we didn't have internet, we didn't have television sets in the, in the labs and so on. And so we all ran to a radio or to uh, a car radio to uh, kind of get a, a blow-by-blow -blow description of what had happened. I had been uh, the chairman of the Friars Formal, which was at that time a yearly event to be held this year, that particular year in the Biltmore in downtown Providence. And I was sitting with the great father, Walter Heath, we were planning the final touches for the big soiree to be held the very next day. And somebody burst in, I forget what time, but uh, probably after one o'clock in the afternoon, 1.30 or so, and said, President Kennedy's been shot. So Father Heath and I discussed, well, first of all, we were optimistic. We said, well, geez, he's probably okay. Hopefully they you know, didn't kill him or anything. We didn't want to think about that, but what do you think we should do? How can you have a celebratory event uh, sponsored by the college or the, or the Friars Club in the face of what could be a real tragedy. But the more we discussed it, we said, you know, uh, it's Friday afternoon, 1 or 1 on 1.30, uh, these young women uh, coming from all over southern New England, New York, New Jersey for this pretty important event, they're probably already here or well underway. So we decided that regardless of what the outcome of this tragedy might be, that we would go ahead with the dance anyway. In the real the real shock of it came in, I think, for me when uh, later in the, in the day I listened to um, Walter Cronkite. And Walter Cronkite was one of those journalists who was very serious. But here he was in the middle of making this uh, shocking announcement, and he had to stop and he removed his, his glasses and, and kind of looked away, uh, obviously experiencing some of the emotion that we were all experiencing at the time. I remember going right by City Hall in the middle of downtown Providence, and I was struck by the people who were walking around, uh, obviously in shock. Many were just crying openly, and others were just walking uh, with a blank stare on their faces that they couldn't believe this. And there was a lot of people out at two, two or after in the afternoon because they had left their offices and everything when they had heard this. It was such an unheard of tragedy. We hadn't had an assassination in, uh, since the turn of the 1900s. And now this young charismatic president that brought so much hope and uplifted the spirits of so many in this country is now dead. The, uh, I remember the ROTC mobilized some memorials on, on uh, some events on campus. Uh, uh, surrounding the uh, assassination, uh, and of course the uh, the friars uh, also had prayer services and so on on campus. The Cowell put out a special edition. <clears throat> I looked in my little archives, I couldn't find a copy of it, but the Cowell did that, and we did have observances. But the dance went on the next day, and we had a tasteful uh, uh, 
commemoration of the, of the late president at the uh, Biltmore in the big fancy ballroom. And this was a black tie event, we were all dressed up. And, and then we, uh, uh, we did make note of that very tragic event. And of course it cast a pall over the entire uh, evening, but it did go on and it was reasonably successful. But I do remember a great sense of loss. What are we going to do now? You know, this is, this is so terrible. Will we ever be able to overcome this? There's just this sense of, of loss. Disbelief turning into the sense of loss. That we had this, we go from this period of high expectation, hope, optimism, and then all of a sudden, it, it seems like just with, 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 a, with a bullet, it's gone, you know.